Within the intricate tapestry of NHL hockey, specific series emerged that surpassed the grandeur of the Stanley Cup Finals. In these closely contested battles, the outcomes are likely to hinge on the smallest mistakes, with one team eventually meeting its match. Adding a heightened intensity to the series where the victory hangs in the balance. I'm sure we can all remember a time when we were watching a series that was so highly competitive and the two teams competing were so even, it almost felt like you were watching the Stanley Cup Finals, despite it being a round or two early. The type of series where you can just tell that the two teams involved are clearly the two best teams in the league. Having triumphed over the first teams that tested them to their absolute limits, enduring a grueling battle that the team awaiting for them in the next round wouldn't stand a chance, and it would just be inevitable that the winner of this series would end up emerging as a Stanley Cup champion. A series of such exceptional quality that in certain moments of viewing, one is compelled to wish it was the illustrious Stanley Cup Finals. A paramount illustration of this phenomenon unfolded during the 2014 Western Conference Finals between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Los Angeles Kings, where the two would engage in a riveting series and although the ultimate goal is to win the Stanley Cup and play in the finals, this series just felt different. The series was so good it had many people wishing it was the finals and in many people's eyes, it was the Stanley Cup Finals that year. So boys, today we're gonna dive into one of my personal favorite series of all time. We're gonna talk about the time the Stanley Cup Finals happened around early. Fresh off their second Stanley Cup victory in four years, the Blackhawks had a commendable record of 46, 21, and 15. It was business as usual for the Blackhawks at the time. They showcased their dominance in 2014 by leading the entire league in goals with 267 of them. Chicago's path to the Western Conference Finals included a great first round series against the Blues, winning the series in six games, and they would do the same thing in the second round against Minnesota, where Patty Kane pretty much put the boys on his back and took over the series himself. In contrast to the Blackhawks, the LA Kings had the league's best defense, with the best goals against average in the NHL, finishing with a 46-28-8 record, and despite not having as potent of an offense as the Blackhawks, LA had many players more than capable of scoring and providing offense. With guys like Anze Kopitar, Jeff Carter, Mike Richards, and Justin Williams, and of course they were backstopped by Quick, who's aged like fine wine by the way, and saying that the LA Kings had one of the greatest Stanley Cup playoff runs in history would be an understatement. In the first round, they would square off against the San Jose Sharks, and they would dig themselves into a hole that seemed impossible to climb out of. It didn't even look like LA was going to win a game in the 2014 playoffs, let alone go on a Stanley Cup run like they did. If LA was going to move on, they would have to become one of only four teams in NHL history to come back from being down three games to nothing to ultimately win the series. After a convincing win in game five, it seemed like there was suddenly a sliver of hope, and the rest was history as they say. is going to join a select group of teams, now just the fourth to ever win a series in seven games after losing the first three. Yeah, that's right. Somehow, some way, the LA Kings would come back from being down three games to nothing against the San Jose Sharks and somehow end up in the second round. And round two was another classic against the Ducks this time. So the Kings would jump out to a 2-0 series lead and astonishingly lose three straight games for the second straight series. But this was the 2014 LA Kings, baby. They rallied back and found a way to beat Anaheim in yet 
another decisive Game 7. Heading into the rematch of last year's 2013 Western Conference Finals, which saw the Blackhawks take out the Kings in five games, a lot was unclear. The Blackhawks had the offense, the Kings had the defense, both teams had great goaltending, exceptional coaching behind the bench, but one thing was certain. This was going to be one hell of a series, but nobody knew just how classic this series would end up becoming. In Game 1, Chicago would open up the series on the power play when Nick Letty would find Brandon Saad in front of the net. Shortly thereafter, the highly memorable That 70s line, and you're going to be hearing a lot of these guys, so get used to it, courtesy of Tyler Toffoli would even the score. En route to his second Norris Trophy victory, Duncan Keith would score to regain the lead for Chicago. And not long after, Taves connected with Johnny Oduya and Marion Hosa, making the game 3-1. Ultimately, this game would just serve as the calm before the storm, and Chicago would take a 1-0 series lead. At the start of Game 2, it really seemed like the Blackhawks were establishing momentum for the series. They came out in control. Scoring early, having a goal taken back, and when Ben Smith scored to make it 2-0, it seemed like we were going to be getting a similar series to the one we saw last year between these two clubs. And just when it looked like things were starting to go from bad to worse for the Kings, Jonathan Quick, who's still doing things like this 10 years later, would execute one of the most timely saves in Kings history, one of the biggest momentum shifting saves you'll ever see. Instead of going down 3-0, LA would ride the momentum of that quick save, and LA stormed back in a huge way, rallying in a remarkable manner, led by a Jeff Carter hat trick and three more goals. The Kings scored six unanswered, destroying the Blackhawks and tying the series up at one. Sipping on booze in the House of Blues, the boys were going back to Cali with one team looking for the edge. At the start of Game 3, it was Captain Clutch Jonathan Taves implementing himself into the series to kick things off, scoring a shorty six minutes in, and the lead would last for a whopping ten seconds, thanks to Slavov Voinov. Whoops, wrong picture. Thanks to Slavov Voinov to level the score at one apiece. Taves would score yet again though to take a 2-1 lead heading into the second. But in a series so marked by parity as you're going to see, no lead was safe. LA demonstrated that resilience that got them this far when Jeff Carter and Tyler Toffoli clapped back for LA, giving them a 3-2 lead. And a goal from Dowdy would put the game out of reach and LA was now up 2 games to 1. And this victory seemed to carry over to the next game. LA would get on the board first for the first time in the series in Game 4. They took the lead early and did a great job building off of it. Something the Blackhawks hadn't been able to do at all in this series. Special teams were also starting to become a huge factor. LA would score twice on the power play. By the time the third period rolled around, LA was up 4-1 with 20 minutes left in the game. And LA really was looking unstoppable. Chicago didn't stand a chance in this game. And by the time they did generate some offense, the game was out of reach. LA takes game four, five to two, putting Chicago's backs up against the wall. And LA was now up three games to one. And at this juncture, it really felt like Chicago just didn't have any more gas in the tank. Guys like Kane, Sharp, or Hosa were nowhere to be found for Chicago. Crawford was faltering. However, Chicago drew resilience from their previous experiences. In 2013, the Blackhawks were in a three games to one hole against the Red Wings. But they didn't bend, fold, or break, and they were able to emerge victorious and go on to win the Stanley Cup. Similarly, LA drew resemblance from the conference finals when they won the Cup in 2012, eliminating the Coyotes in a five-game series of their own. So with the Kings being up three games to one again and Chicago being down three games to one again, how would this all unfold? In Game 5, Chicago proved they still had the hearts of a champion, getting two quick goals right off the 
Aha, but Williams came back right away, but so did Saad, and now it was three to one. Less than a minute later, Gabrick and the Kings would strike back, making for a wild five goal first period. Now strap in boys, we're just getting started. Dustin Brown and that damn 70s line would take over in the second period, and LA would go up four to three. Chicago was now running out of time with 20 minutes to save their season. An unsung hero would end up saving Chicago's season. Ben Smith would tie the game minutes into the third. And after another 20 minutes of intense, high-paced playoff hockey, the score remained tied. And for the first time in this series, we were headed to overtime. In this overtime, the Blackhawks and Kings would do something that truly reminds everybody just how exciting and beautiful playoff hockey can be. And this was some of the most exciting hockey I've ever seen. They would play just under 8 minutes uncontested without a whistle. Truly a rare sight and a standout moment in the series for sure. Following this intense sequence, this year's version of David vs Goliath was heading to a second overtime. And just moments into the second overtime, we'd have a win. Hassan looks around, looks for help, gets it over, Hanzo scores! Hanzo wins the game for Chicago! The pivotal game six back in LA, the Kings had their sights set on returning to the Stanley Cup Finals for the second time in three years now. Dwight King and the LA Kings kicked things off in game six with just under three minutes to play in the first. However, that goal didn't prove to be very significant and it was tempered by a reoccurring trend in the series. And that trend being that no lead was ever safe. Because a certain beast would finally be awoken. Taves to Kane like we've seen a thousand times tying the game up. Giving Kings fans haunting memories of years past. Now that Chicago's big guns were going, felt like they might just have a chance after all. And that goal would be complemented by a Ben Smith goal that would give the Blackhawks the 2-1 to one lead they needed. And if you've made it this far in the video, well, thank you first of all, you should like and subscribe, but if you've made it this far, you probably already know what's going to happen next. Because this series just kept getting crazier and crazier with each passing game. Doughty and Martinez would orchestrate a comeback, taking a 3-2 lead back for the Kings. Momentum shifts were the norm, no lead no matter how hard fought could be sustained without a fierce battle for supremacy. Okay, LA has the lead heading into the third at home, 20 minutes is all they need, just hold on to the lead and they're in the finals again. These assumptions of safety based off of a lead would just end up being a precautionary tale because LA was about to get hit with showtime. With less than 10 to play with eyes seemingly on the back of his head, Patrick Kane displayed incredible vision to set up Duncan Keith for the game tying goal. Tied 3-3, we were headed to overtime again. Or Patty Kane would just prove why he's the greatest American born player of all time. With less than four minutes to go, Chicago was now up four to three. It was now time for every sports fan's two favorite words, game seven. Heading into game seven, everything else was just gravy at this point because it really felt like we were watching the two best teams in the world go at it in what would end up being an epic seven game series that unfortunately was going to be coming to an end. Doughty, Kopitar, Kane, Taves were all in their primes, 
fully ascending into the assailant of hockey stardom. Crawford and Quick were both struggling at times, but they were both coming up with clutch saves when they needed to, when their teams needed them the most. The iconic That 70s line, the coming out parties for guys like Tyler Toffoli, Brandon Sod, and Alec Martinez, this series had it all. And amidst the numerous heart-wrenching blown leads and dramatic come-from-behind wins, this series was already a classic, but I don't think anybody was ready for what was in store for Game 7 of the 2014 Western Conference Finals back in Chicago. Patrick Kane and Brandon Saad got the ball rolling for Chicago, followed by another clutch goal from Jonathan Taves. In complete control, Chicago looked like they finally learned from their previous mistakes of the past games. But true to the ultimate pattern that would define almost every game in this series, the belief that any lead was safe was just elusive at this point. Just minutes later, Jeff Carter was able to just keep his stick under the crossbar, cutting the lead down to one. Then Justin Williams would live up to his Mr. Game 7 name and tie the game just minutes later. 12 seconds later, yes, 12 seconds, Patrick Sharp would retake the lead back for Chicago. It was now 3-2 heading into the second and both teams would settle in. Just kidding, nobody would settle in at any point during this series. Toffoli would score tying the game at 3, so of course Patrick Sharp would just score to make it 4-3 like it was nothing. 4-3 heading into the third, Chicago just needed to hang on. Surely, this was finally the time they would simmer down and hold a damn lead. Stayed on side. Walker save. Score! Marion Gabrick ties the game with 7-17 seven, remaining. Gabrick just scored one of the all-time crowd silencers. It was 4-4. And it's only right that a series this epic went right down to the wire and would only end by separating the two teams by a mere goal. That's right. If the two best words in sports are Game 7, well, the three best are Game 7 overtime. Brown. Brown, nice move on Oduya. Brown to the net. And a left hand save by Crawford. Shot. Shaw with a shot. Oh, and a glove save by Quick. Lost his stick. Puck comes out to Martinez. Martinez with a shot. It's in. The Kings are headed to the Stanley Cup final. The shot by Martinez deflected and beats Crawford. It will be the Los Angeles Kings and the New York Rangers. Game one, Wednesday night at Staples Center. Alec Martinez had done it, baby, and the LA Kings emerged victorious. Martinez scored the biggest goal of his life, well, until about a week later. Nevertheless, the LA Kings were going to the Stanley Cup Finals, putting an end 
into one of the greatest series the sport has ever seen. Looking back at the standouts from this series, Jeff Carter had a crazy series, putting up 5 goals and 6 apples in 7 games. Doughty had a great series with 3 goals and 4 assists. Williams had 2 goals and 5 assists throughout. And Toffoli had an amazing series with 4 goals and 2 assists. Patrick Kane had 2 goals and 8 assists throughout the series. Brandon Saad had 4 goals and 5 assists. Taves had a clutch series with 4 goals and 3 assists. And ultimately, Jonathan Quick was just able to outdo a Corey Crawford. Neither goaltender had a save percentage in the 900s, with Crawford having a brutal brutal 878 save percentage throughout and quick having a pretty bad 889 save percentage. LA would emerge victorious as Stanley Cup champions, beating the New York Rangers in 5 games in convincing fashion. And fueled by the motivation from their heartbreaking loss in the 2014 Western Conference Finals, Chicago would go on to win their third cup in 6 seasons just over a year later. As the final goal went in, right off of Nick Letty, the 2014 Western Conference Finals between the Kings and Blackhawks emerged as an extraordinary chapter that defied conventional expectations. Rivaling the intensity usually associated with the Stanley Cup Finals, this series etched in the minds of the hockey enthusiasts, showcased a remarkable blend of high-scoring affairs, closely contested games, infusing each game with an unpropelled factor of anxiety and unpredictability. Nostalgia for the 2014 Western Conference Finals is inevitable for any hockey fan reflecting on this time in the sport. So here's to the 2014 Western Conference Finals for being so damn epic, it honestly felt like the Stanley Cup Finals happened one round early. See you boys.